Good morning, good morning, one and all. We are going to need a chair today. Tim is going to help model the poses for me today. So make sure that you have a folding chair or a suitable chair nearby. And we begin this practice in the posture of life. I think most of you know it, but for some of you, if it's a new pose, you're looking to place something behind the spine. So it might be a bolster. You can also use a rolled up sticky mat. You place it right behind the spine. Your hips are on the floor. Your buttocks is on the floor. You tuck the shoulders under. It's a passive way of releasing tension, opening the breath. The legs are of less importance and there's choices you have. So one choice is to be in what's called the bound position where you bring your feet together and the knees are out to the side. And you'll want to place something underneath your knees. It could be a blanket. If having the knees apart and the feet together is not necessarily a good pose for your body, you can also bring the knees together. It's called the tent pose. So we're going to start with the posture of life here. So lay back. So we start here for seven, eight minutes. Let go into gravity. and stop all doing. For a moment, you might even, as you inhale, let the belly balloon out. We call them abdominal extensions. Just stick the belly out and then let the breath go. Try that again. Inhale and let the belly expand and let it go. You might open your jaw for a moment, move your jaw side to side. Release any tension in the, the jaw muscle, the throat. Soften the muscles on your face, let your face relax and melt. And the breath will passively relax. Without you needing to do anything. We call this the posture of life because it allows us to breathe much more easily. It can be very helpful for digestion.
for helping to retain the lumbar curvature as we grow older and age. If you're a, a person who winds up sitting too much in chairs or at a computer, the posture of life will, is like a counter pose. It relieves habitual rounding of the spine. collapsing of the rib cage. And so you let go and then let go even more. And a third time, release and let go and let the 10,000 things be as they are. We human beings have very limited control in the world. We cannot control other people, not very well and not for long. We can't necessarily control the events in our life, the things that happen to us. And you let the world be as it is. Here is the Tao Te Ching. And this translation is from Dr. Wayne Dwyer, Dyer. Everything under heaven is a sacred vessel. Trying to control everything leads to ruin. Trying to grasp, we lose. Allow your life to fold naturally, knowing that it too is a vessel of perfection. Just as you breathe in and breathe out, There is a time for being in motion, a time for being at rest, a time for being vigorous, and a time for being exhausted. To the wise one, all of life is a movement towards perfection. So what need has he for 
what is excessive or extravagant or extreme. Today we're going to move the body and in very easy and accommodating ways for most body types. But you will need to make your own decisions at various times. Test things out and see if they are appropriate for you. And now slowly bring your knees together and rock your knees left and right a few times just to release any tension in your pelvis, in your sacrum, in your lumbar spine. And then Choose a side and roll to that side, and maybe you pause for just a moment. Before coming all the way up to standing posture. So move your pillows out of the way. And if, if you're joining us late, make sure that you have a chair today. We're gonna to do a few poses using the assistance of a chair. and come on up to standing. Your feet about hip width apart to start with. Lift up your toes, lift all 10 toes up, spread them wide and then press them down. Shift the weight back towards the heels for a moment. Shift the weight forward towards the toes and shift back towards the heels and then rock forward towards your toes. And then balance the weight right in front, in the center of the foot, right in front of the heel bone. Press down into the feet, lift up your heart and draw up through the top of the head. For a moment, place your hands on your rib cage. Spread out the fingers. And Tactily feel your body breathe. Feel the, the ribs move with the breath. This pulse of life. Here's the practice of active inhale and active exhale. So you relax your hands. Press into your feet. Inhale a little bit and lift your ribs up. Inhale a little more. Inhale and press firmly down into the feet. And now blow seven, eight times, feet kind of wide, curl over, put your hands on your knees, round your back, pull in your belly, tuck under the tailbone, squeeze your chin to your chest. And then you roll up in your time. Maybe you close your eyes and you feel the effect. Let's do that again, active inhale. Inhale a little, inhale, open the back ribs. Inhale, open in all dimensions, pause a moment and squirm around a little bit. And blow, clear out every bit of breath, blow seven, eight times, draw the low belly back up and in, tuck in the tailbone and round your spine. You come on up, pressing into the feet and experience the after effects. A third one, inhale a little, inhale a little, inhale some more, 
filled with breath, full of life. Roll your shoulders around a little bit. And blow it away. <laughs> Squeeze out every bit of breath, but we're also squeezing the front body, squeezing the blood out of the lungs. And you come rolling on up. Lift your heart up brightly inside your chest as you press the feet down. Clear your mind, alternate nostril, Kapalabhati. And so thumb and fourth finger. Most of you know this, just begin it. For those of you who are new, you close off your right nostril with your thumb and you do a sharp exhale through the left nostril. Take your fourth finger, close off your left nostril and do a sharp exhale through the right nostril. And you alternate nostrils, exhale, exhale. There's just exhaling here. Keep the mouth closed. Now you'll notice that when Tim exhales, he's pulling the belly in. Pull the belly in, exhale. Pull the belly in, exhale. 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 There's no inhale. It's passive. It's reflexive. Focus just on the exhale. 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 And now here's active inhale once again. Release the hand, inhale, press into your feet, inhale, inhale even more. You might even drop your chin here if you like. And then blow it away many times. <laughs> emptying the breath, but also emptying the past. Emptying. And then you come rolling on up pressing into your feet, and you lift your heart up brightly. And then again, alternate nostril kapalabhati. We call this clearing the mind. Short exhales have the effect of releasing the stickiness of thoughts. Have you ever had a thought that you just can't get out of your mind or you're obsessing about something? This is such a valuable and useful practice for clearing the mind's clinging nature to things that are upsetting you. Emotional problems, mental problems, things that you're trying to fix outside of you. It's often the problem. Couple more. Exhale, 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 exhale. And now here's an active inhale. Inhale a little, inhale some more. Take an even more breath. And now open up your back ribs a little bit. Let your shoulders go forward and play around. Get the breath into all parts of the lungs. And now blow it away seven, eight times and squeeze out the breath. Suck up the belly, tuck under the tailbone, close the throat, and you find your way up. Here's another hand and breath exercise. So as you inhale, spread out your fingers and your hands just alongside your body and inhale. So your hands mirror your lungs, open the ribs wide. And now as you exhale, squeeze up and make tight fists, squeeze your forearms, squeeze your fingers, and then inhale, Open your hands, open your palms, stretch the fingers wide, and then exhale, tighten up the grip and squeeze your fingers tightly. Such a simple practice. Inhale, open your hands, 
reach out through all 10 fingers. And then exhale, squeeze up fists. Now roll the fists around, roll your wrists in both directions and lubricate the wrists and the forearms. And then relax the hands for a moment. This is the opposite breathing pattern. So now inhale and squeeze up and make tight fists. And then exhale, spread open the fingers and the palms. So we're doing the opposite of the lungs. And then inhale and squeeze up tight fists and forearms. And then exhale, open up the fingers wide, palms wide. And inhale, as tight a fist as you can make. And then exhale, open up the fingers, open up the palms. One more. Inhale and squeeze the fingers. And then exhale, open up the fingers. And roll your wrists around. Right? Kind of shake off any tension that may have been left from the squeezing practice. And this is the prayer breath. Bring your hands together in prayer position in front of your heart. Press into your feet. Now your eyes can be open or closed. You get to choose. If you have your eyes open, gaze at a, at a dot in front of you. With an inhale, you drop the hands and you sweep them wide out to the side and all the way up overhead you bring the palms together and you look up at the thumbs. And then exhale, draw the thumbs down the center line and right back to your heart, joining breath and movement. And inhale, sweep the hands out to the side and wide and all the way up overhead. Look at your thumbnails and then exhale, draw the palms down to the heart and lift the heart up, press into the feet. A third one, inhale. Every moment you're aware, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And then exhale, draw the palms down and smile into your good fortune. And two more, inhale, inhale. Open the rib cage and reach and extend. And then exhale, draw the palms down. And the last one, inhale. Keep inhaling, inhale until the last second the fingers touch. And then exhale, 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 exhale. Back to the heart. This is the dumping breath. Inhale, sweep the hands all the way up overhead, feet kind of whitish, and bend your knees and exhale and swing and dump. And inhale, sweep the hands up. And exhale, find a motion that's good for your body. Inhale, find a rhythm. And exhale, swing and let go. Inhale, sweep the hands forward and up. And exhale. You can do this with a ha breath. Inhale. And exhale with a ha. Inhale, knees are bent and soft. Exhale with a ha. Ah. Three more. Inhale. And exhale with a ha. Ah. And an inhale. And an exhale with a ha. Ah. Last one. Exhale with a ha. Ah. And now put your hands on your knees and straighten out your arms. Feet kind of hip width apart here. Cat and cow. Halfway pose. Exhale, pull in the belly and tuck in the tailbone. Bring the chin towards the chest and round your shoulders. With the inhale through the nose, arch the spine. Tilt the pelvis forward, lift the chin, lift the tailbone, look up. Exhale, draw in your belly and round your spine. Straight arms. And now go at your own pace here. 
So we're opening up the central channel of the body here. Follow the natural rhythm of your breath. This is how the body works. You're using the natural motion of the body to assist the pumping action of the heart and the lungs. A few more. And then on your next one, press into the feet and come rolling all the way up to standing and walk your feet fairly close together. Now, some of you will want them about hip width apart. Some of you might like them all the way together. Press down into your heels and move your pelvis so that it's over the centers of the feet. Lift up the heart and pull a string right up through the core of the body, smiling at the back of your brain. Take your right hand up and over and have it touch your left ear. Bring the shoulder blades down, the left shoulder blade down the back body, lift up the heart, press into the feet, and now guide your head towards your right shoulder. Breathing now into the left side of the neck. Making tiny little adjustments with your elbow, bringing the head a little forward, a little back. See if you can find a smooth and non-anxious breath in the left side of the neck. The kind of breath that is sweet and integrates maybe the knots you find or the the unconsciously held tension buried in the body. Five or six breaths to go here. When the neck tension is released in the body, the whole body rejoices, truly. You can do all kinds of yoga poses, but the neck and the skull is so critical, the jaw, now to enhance the pain relieving effect, let's hum here, taking a breath, inhale, inhale, and inhale. the ear, release the hand, and your head floats back up to center. And just pause for a moment right in the center and feel the two sides of the neck, the two shoulders, how different they are. Here's the other side, press into your feet and sweep the left hand up and over. Maybe it touches the ear. And then bring the shoulder blades down, press into your feet, lift up the heart, and guide the head over towards the other side. And so it's an inside job, this practice. You're looking inside with your mind's eye. Where are my spots? We tend to have these places where we chronically hold our tension and the neck and shoulders is one of the usual suspects for most people. People who shoulder a lot of responsibility. People who have to take care of work, children. This includes most people. And make the little tiny adjustments that are so satisfying, a little elbow going this way, or a little swirl, or this tiny little place that only you can know about. And now let's add in the pain relieving hum. 
Inhale and inhale and inhale. Release the ear and have your head float back up to center and pause. Press down into your feet, lift up the breastbone and now bring the hands and interlace them behind the skull. Bring your elbows forward. Lift the heart up and let the weight of the arms and the hands bring the chin down and forward. And see if you can get into the back of the neck. So the breastbone lifts, the head drops forward and your elbows are releasing the base of the skull here. This is often a tricky place for many people, right at the base of the skull. And let's hum, let's give it some pain relief here. Taking a breath and a long hum. Mm -hmm. Bring the elbows a little left, a little right. A little left, a little right. Notice how it goes right down the spine, all the way to the heels, maybe. Good. And one more hum. Mm. Release the hands and let the arms float back alongside your body. Press into your feet and lift up right underneath the bottom of the heart. Here's some shoulder rolls. Inhale, take your shoulders up and forward and then up and then up and back and then down the back body and around slowly mobilizing your scapulae and your arm bones. Get the juices to flow in the shoulders, in the neck. Very slow circling action of, of the entire shoulder girdle here. And then circle the shoulders in the other direction. Big rolling circular action of the shoulders. And then let the arms rest alongside your body. This is called prana pulls. Inhale, reach up with all 10 fingers. Reach out at an angle, spread out your palms. Some of you might want to open your feet a little wider apart and get a bigger base here. And now exhale, curl and pull in fists round your body. And inhale and open, open wide, open your palms embracing the universe, we call this. And then exhale, curl and round your back, tighten up fists, soft knees here. Inhale and expand out, become as large as possible. And then exhale, become as small as possible, put in, pull into the pit of the belly, tuck under the tailbone. Three more, big expansion. Exhale, contract, tight fists, curl your toes. Again, 
Go larger than your physical body, outside your skin. Exhale and make a tight pull into the body. And then let everything go and stand once again in the mountain pose. This is alternate nostril breathing, Nadi Shodhana. So thumb and fourth finger. And I think most of you know it if you're new to this practice. Inhale through your left nostril. You switch sides and you exhale through the right. Continue on, inhale through the right. Change sides and exhale through the left. Inhale, same side. Chain sides and exhale on the other. This very simple practice is the key to opening up the entire yoga tradition. Balancing the brain, balancing the the two sides, the two energy currents in the body. We usually start off with a few minutes and over time you build your practice up. We're going to extend the exhale now, doing alternate nostril breath by humming with it. So when you inhale on one side, you switch nostrils and now hum. Mm. Inhale, same side. Switch nostrils and hum. Mm. A couple more times. Inhale. Switch nostrils and hum. Mm. As you extend the exhale, what's happening is you're shifting the vagal tone to the parasympathetic side of your nervous system. Mm. The humming introduces all kinds of pain relieving effects in the body. Here's the last one. Let the hand go and take the sacred pause here. Will you just stop? Let things be as they are. Here is one armed half moon. So you can have your feet about hip width apart. Some of you might even want to challenge yourself and bring the feet a little closer. Anchor down into the feet. Move your pelvis so that it's over the centers of the feet, lift up out of the waist and take your right hand up towards the sky and spread out your fingers, spread out your palms. So first, open up the lines of energy through the right side of the body. Take in a breath. And now move your hips out to the right, tailbone down, lower belly comes back up and in to give you support. And 
reaching out over towards the side. See if you can not just stretch your body, but stretch the breath through the right side of the body. Inside the posture, make small adjustments. You can change the position of your head and neck. Some people might prefer to look down. Others look straight ahead. Others may be up at the hand. All positions, all hand positions are legal. You might experiment and turn the palm up to the ceiling. Roll the wrist. Turn the palm towards the floor and notice how it does something different. We're here for about five more breaths. We like to get past the 45 second zone in many of these poses, because that's where a whole other process starts to kick in. A smooth and a balanced breath in. And on your exhale, maybe extend the exhale just a little bit. A felt sense of a longer exhale. And an inhale through the nostrils. And a slow and a balanced breath out. Here comes five pulses. Pulse a little lower. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Pulse, squeeze, hold, and contract. And then inhale, you come on up. You lower your right hand and you pause once again. You stop everything in your life and soak in the effect. Here's the left hand. Take your left hand out to the side and all the way up overhead. Press down into the left foot. Squeeze and contract your hip and thigh muscles. Grow as long through the left side of the body as you can. And now introduce a bit of an arc, tailbone down, and start to arc, reaching your fingers to the right. The low belly comes back up and in and gives you support. Now, how can you find freedom of breathing in this shape? How can I let go of any anxiety in the pose? A free flowing breath in all the postures of our life. Smooth inhale and smooth exhale. Once again, see if you can go a little bit out of your comfort zone. No, not too far, but a little bit out of your comfort zone. Here's five pulses. Pulse, 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 pulse. Pulse to your lowest point. Squeeze, contract, and hold every muscle tightly. And then inhale. And you come on up and you lower the hand. And there's another pause moment here. Take your feet wide, turn your toes out. With the weight in the heels, bring your hands behind you and the heel of the hand on your belt line, fingers pointing down, and bring your elbows back, bring your shoulders back. Put the weight in the heels, squeeze under the bottom of the buttocks, and lift your chin up. Maybe you can look at a dot on the ceiling. Move your spine forward, bring your ribs back. With the weight in the heels, moving the pelvis forward, the sacrum forward. Find a free and open breath in this shape. Breathe only through the nose. Liberate. Going far is not necessary in the pose. Being where you are and breathing smoothly is the sweet spot you're looking for. Couple more here, weight in the heels, pelvis forward. Take in one more breath. 
Good. And now bend your knees. Come on up. Bend your knees. Slide your hands down your thighs or shins. Turn your toes in. And here's a forward standing hang here. Now, use your hands on a place that's supportive for you. Be sure not to have straight legs. Right? You soften the knees and that will send the fold into the hip, hip socket and not your low back. Try turning your toes inward and the heels out and that will help release the sacrum and the low spine forward. So everyone will wind up in a different place. Some of you might hold elbows. Some of you might have your hands on your shins or your hands on your knees. The point is not to, to do what someone else is doing, but to find your expression of releasing the spine, releasing the shoulders, releasing the neck with gravity this is so good for your brain. The baroreceptors in your blood vessels in the brain need to adjust. You will find that with daily practice, this will be so helpful for your circulation, for your mood, your sense of well being. And then press into your feet and slide the hands up the shins, up the knees, and walk the feet back underneath you into the mountain pose and lift your heart up brightly. Place your hands on the back of the chair. Now, if you don't have a chair, maybe you use a table. Good. And first thing is to walk the feet back and form an L position with your body. So we sometimes call this down facing dog on the wall. We're using a chair today or take the chair pose. Have your feet maybe hip width apart as a starting place. Reach the fingers forward, pull the upper thigh bones back and then take three breaths here opening the ribs sideways. As you spread open the ribs, it has the effect of opening the spine. Each of the ribs go right into the vertebrae and spread them wide. You go into the vertebrae and spread them, lengthening them. And now on the next inhale, bring just the head up. We're going to step to warrior one. Take your right foot and step your right foot towards the chair, spin and drop the back heel, anchor into the back heel, bend your right knee and tailbone down, draw in your low belly. Now, many of you will like to keep your hands on the chair some of you, try bringing one hand up first and feel the interest of an asymmetrical warrior pose. Once again, you're gonna need a fuller, stronger breath here. Some of you might like to bring both hands up. Play around with the orientation of the hands and the fingers. Squeeze the musculature of the back leg, anchoring the back heel down. Draw in your low belly for support. We're going to hold this for 35 breaths. Lift your toes up. No, just two more breaths. Breathe in and breathe out. It's a posture that really gets your blood moving. Breathing in and breathing out. Good job. Now place your hands on the chair and straighten out your right leg. This is straight-legged runner's stretch. 
Some people might like adjusting their feet, the angle of the feet or the distance of the feet. Make tiny adjustments for your body. See if you can straighten out your right leg, lift up the right kneecap, engage the right quadricep, draw back the right hip, squeeze the inner thighs towards each other, lift up out of the heart, and now folding, lift up out of the heart and fold the heart and the chest forward. Use the hands in an appropriate way for your body. Try lifting up your toes here. And notice how that strengthens the shins. It elevates the arches. It activates the feet. Squeeze the inner thighs. One more breath here. Good. And now place your hands back on the top of the chair if they're not there and bend your right knee. Bend your right knee and place your right elbow on top of your right knee. This is, we're moving in the direction of side angle pose. So you might adjust your left foot, turn the toes out a little bit more. See if you can take your left hand and wrap it behind your back. Draw in the belly, anchor into your left heel, and then start to lift up and out of the waist and spiral the left shoulder back, bring the right shoulder under. Smooth breath in and smooth breath out. Some of you stay with the hand wrapped behind the back. Others of you will want to take your left arm and sweep it out and reach up at an angle. So the whole left side of the body is one long line. Press down in the outer edge of the left foot and reach out beyond the fingers. Breathing five. And four. Smooth breath in. And smooth breath out in three. And two. Nice. Now look down and place your hands on the chair and straighten out your right leg. And now walk the right foot back to the left foot and come back into your L position here, where you, where you take the chair. Imagine that you have a big dinosaur tail and wag your tail a few times. It's a very helpful move for getting things back in place. Here's that same sequence on the other side. So pick the head up on the inhale and step your left foot forward. Spin the right heel at an angle that's appropriate for your bones and press the right heel down, bend your left knee. Now you want the left knee hovering right over your left heel bone, tailbone down, belly in. And with the hands on the chair, just try turning the rib cage a little left and a little right, a little left and a little right. Anchor into the right heel and now sweep the right hand up or the left hand. Try one-handed. Sometimes we just throw both hands up very quickly, but when you do one hand at a time, you'll notice that it's a very different pose, full of interesting places to visit inside. So keeping either both hands on the chair or one hand up, some of you both hands up, as if you're holding a full moon in your hands. You've got this huge bright moon Tailbone is down and the belly is in. The breath is as smooth and as connected as can be. Five breaths more here, breathing in and breathing out. This is a posture of confidence, of building strength. Breathing in and breathing out. Smooth breath in and a balanced breath out. And then one more here. Good, and now place the hands on the chair. Straighten out your left leg. 
Now, when you make this transition, you might adjust the angle of your feet a little bit or the distance between the feet. About leg length is the usual distance. So anchor into the feet and lift the toes up, squeeze, isometrically squeeze the musculature in towards the center of the bone. Press the right hip forward, draw on the belly button. And then when the lower body is strong and stable, tilt up and out of the waist and bow. Breastbone out over the shin. Have your hands on a supportive place on the chair for your body. Pull your left kneecap up the front of the thigh. Smooth breath in and smooth breath out. And a smooth breath in and a balanced breath out. Two more. Good, now bring your hands to the top of the chair. Once again, bend your left knee, bend your left knee and place your left elbow on your left knee at left thigh. Take your right hand and wrap it behind your back. Spin the right shoulder blade back. Start at your feet, ground the feet once again, squeeze the thighs, draw on the belly and start turning up and out of the waist, turn the ribs. And now can you find a breath that's free and easy? We purposely bind the breath a little bit here. And then some of you might like to take your right hand and reach up and over at an angle. Don't be in too much of a hurry to get to some sort of idea of a final pose. Don't miss all the beautiful places in between. Press in the outer edge of the right heel and zoom up along the right side of the body, out beyond your right finger. Smooth breath in and an easy flowing breath out. A bigger breath, inhale, opening the rib cage wide and then an exhale. You need the strength and the power here for the pose. One more. Nicely done. Now look down first and put your hand on the chair. And then put both hands on the chair. Straighten out your left leg and start walking the left foot back to down facing dog. Adjust the feet, adjust the pelvis. Once again, find a dinosaur tail here. And you shift the weight from one heel to the other heel. What's nice about this posture, there's so many nice things, is you get to breathe free and easily here. Think of your rib cage like an accordion. You can spread open the accordion of your ribs. And now start walking the feet up towards the chair. And we're going to be doing a standing twist today. So you might have the feet about hip width apart. Put your left hand on the chair, try that. And take your right hand and wrap it behind your back. Go down through your heels, lift up your heart. All twists come from the earth and move up. So from your feet, you start to press your left hip forward and your right hip pulls back, draw in the belly, turn the lower ribs to the right, bring the left side of your rib cage forward, turn the shoulder back, pull up through the top of the head. The last thing that turns is the chin. If you have your eyes open, look out of the right corners of your eyes. And everything is better when you hum. Inhale, inhale, inhale.
the humming gets into all those little places up and down the spine that are so hard to access. Let's do that again, inhale. Press into your feet, inhale, inhale. Keep the rib cage lifted, hum and spin. And unwind slowly, placing the hands on the chair. Here's the other side. Take your left hand, wrap it behind your back, press into your feet, squeeze your inner thighs, lift up and out of the waist, and start turning the left hip back and the right hip forward. Bring your left kidney back and your right kidney forward. Walk your hand on the chair, draw the bottom of the heart up, spinning to the left now. There's no need to go to your full version right away. Do it in little steps, little stages. And now 60%, 70%, go out to the edge here. Take in a breath, pull a cord up through the center of the body. And here's a hum. Mm. Inhale and inhale. And now slowly unwind. And we're going to come down to the floor. Come lie on your back, bend your knees, and draw the knees up towards your chest here. You might put your hands on your knees here and slowly circle the knees. Take the knees around gently, what do we call a pelvic clock? If anything in your pelvis and your SI joint and your sacrum felt a little bit unbalanced, this is the pose that puts everything back in its place. Good, here's Apanasana number one. Pick your head up in this pose and wrap your arms as far around your knees as you can. Now you might have your hands or your forearms or your elbows. Squeeze your forehead towards the knees, pull in the belly, and now squeeze for five, tighten everything up, and four, and squeeze your feet and your face and your toes, and three, and your calves and your thighs and your low belly, two, and release. Put your feet on the floor, knees bent, tent pose. So in the tent pose, the knees touch and the feet are wide like a tent. You tuck your shoulders under, you turn your palms up, and you let go. Let's repeat that, apanasana number one. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Wrap your arms up around your knees and Engage every muscle in your body very tightly for five. Squeeze your feet and your toes and your calves, four, and your hips and your thighs, and pull in your belly, and three, and squeeze, and squeeze, and two, and squeeze, and one. And now Supta Baddha Konasana. So you Put the feet together and the knees flop out wide. You tuck your shoulders under. And we're not using any props because we're just here for a couple of breaths.
This is legs in the air pose. Bring your knees together. Press your feet into the floor and see if you can lift your hips up and either place a pillow, a block, a blanket underneath the pelvis so your pelvis is higher than your heart. And then bring the legs up into the air. And now some of you might use a wall here, especially if, if your hamstrings are short or if you just prefer the wall. We're looking for an effortless upside down position for just a few moments, a few breaths. This is so good for your circulation, for your lymphatics. I think of the, the task, blood down in your feet, by the pressure of your heart, they have the, the old blood needs to return back to the heart. And here, gravity just assists you. This very simple pose is, is quite helpful in your daily regimen for self-care. The yogi said, if you want to live long and healthy, turn your body upside down. Well, the headstand is impractical for many people. It's downright dangerous for other people. This is a posture everyone can do. And it has other benefits that headstand and shoulder stand don't have. Let the pose be effortless. So you let go of all willful struggling. Here's a reading from a dear teacher of mine, Nikki Singer. Your mind has very little control over this world. It is neither omniscient nor omnipotent. It cannot control the weather and natural forces, nor can it control all people, places, and things around you. You've given your mind an impossible task by asking it to manipulate the world in order to fix your personal desires and your inner problems. If you want to achieve a healthy state of being, stop asking your mind to control everything. Just relieve your mind of the job of making sure that everyone and everything will be the way you need them to be so that you can feel better inside. Your mind is not qualified for that job. Fire it and learn to let go of your inner problems instead. So we have this balance in our lives between will and surrender, making things happen and knowing when to let go.
there's a time for creation and there's a time for complete surrender. Bending your knees now, bringing the feet back to the floor once again. Remove the block or the pillow or the blanket. Roll to either side. And then come on up to a final sitting posture. You can sit in a chair, you can sit on a block, on a pillow, and take one last moment and observe your inner landscape. The vast territory within the skin. This so-called kingdom of heaven within. Lift up the bottom of your heart and smile into your good fortune. Bring your hands into prayer position over your heart if you like, or stack them up on top of the heart. And moving forward into this day, recognizing the things that you can influence and letting go of most of life, which is beyond our grasp and not letting the mind get upset and worried. And let's tune the body and the breath, our emotions, our intellect with the sound of OM four times, inhale, inhale and inhale Oh Inhale, inhale, inhale. one. Inhale, inhale, and inhale. every day, 6 a.m. It's a great way to start your day. Take care now.